home to at least three different species. Countless, I don't, I don't know how many Tina Fours are on there. Um, so and yeah, I'm gonna also go. as tall as Herc. Yeah, and as tall as Herc. Can you do a, if you, do you have the tether to do a fly up from the base all the way up the top? Yep. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh. oh. And something in Adelina's view. What is that? Oh it's another God, orb. It's one of those uh, tusca Tuscadariums. I can try to capture it, but I'm at the mercy of the uh, swell of the ocean right now. Yeah. I can uh, leave the camera there. I'm kind of glancing at it as well. I like this. It feels like a ball that's bouncing in that yeah. frame. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of like Glinda from um, The Wizard of Oz, yeah. like in her big old bubble. What was the uh, branch up there, Brent? I'll come down and get a shot of the base here, but then we'll come back up. Put our, put our nose into the breeze a little here, maybe. Can you come down another five meters? To A curious, curious, curious kind of branch here. I don't know if yeah. you caught that. So Herc's altitude is reading two meters right now. Let's see what it looks like at the top. Oh yeah, that's interesting. So Brian, can you tell us what makes this Aridogorgia so different from everything else? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an answer for that one, sorry. It's tall. It's tall. It's old. Okay. All right. So that looks like two and a half meters or so. Two and a half meter tall Aridogorgia. Good eye. I'm going to miss that one. Man. Nice flying. Beautiful shot. And nice video work. Oh, uh, Daryl. So that has been tagged for video highlights later on. I know we still have another 30 minutes, but it has been a pretty great shift. Yeah, this has been a good dive. Yeah. And Brian thought we were only going to see sediment. I did. I totally <laughs> was wrong on this one. I was definitely worried that this was going to be a relatively yeah, boring dive. Right. I'll come around. And I am happily wrong. I'm not close to you. Maybe if we always go in thinking it's just going to be sediment. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm kind of a pessimist. That's kind of my uh, general MO. Ten Expect the worst and me. be excited when I'm wrong. Um, we'll come around to the uh, south of you there. down a bit for us. We got a little floater. Is that a little eel? Go with fish for the moment. <laughs> I can't tell. I had it to looks like if I had to little... guess, I'd say halosaur, but Okay. Okay, Lynette, I think we're good for are we good for twenty? I think so, I think so. So looking at our stats of people joining us from other countries, we have a huge swath from Europe, Australia. So we got Switzerland, Germany, France, UK, Hong Kong, Italy, Lithuania, the Maldives, Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, Singapore, Australia, Canada, and of course the United States. But a ginormous group from all over the world. And it looks like from all over Australia. Three people from across the continent slash country.
Coralie, are these, besides the United States, have you visited any of these other countries? Yes. Uh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> wait, actually. <laughs> um, yes, I'm trying to I've do a slow school. I've been to Canada. I've not been to Australia. Always wanted to go. I've not been to Norway, but people in Norway love me. Um. <laughs> Is that just like with a lot of confidence? Like, <laughs> I know, I know if I was in Norway, they would have liked me their princess kind of thing. I've like met a lot of Norwegians and we always get along. I get along with Nordic people, like Norwegians, Swedish, Danish. Um, never been there though. Uh, Singapore, haven't been, always wanted to go. Portugal, that's actually where my mom is right now. Uh, I've been to Netherlands. Oh. Uh, have not been to Maldives or Lithuania or Italy or Hong Kong or UK, but I'm planning on going this summer. Uh, and then I've been to France and Germany, and I technically have been to Switzerland, but only in the Zurich airport, and honestly, it was a mess. Look, <laughs> I got so lost in the airport. For me. Lynette, I know you are a huge traveler. <laughs> Have you been to any of those countries? Switzerland, Germany, France, UK, Hong Kong, Italy, Lithuania, Maldives, <laughs> Netherlands, Portugal. <laughs> it's quite a list. Uh, um, UK, Italy, Norway, Hong Kong. Australia? Never Australia. What about Singapore, the Netherlands? Netherlands, not Singapore. Ooh, so we have a group that's been to so many of these countries. Daryl, what about you? For countries? Yeah. Uh, I can look down a little more for us. Uh, I can just say the countries I've been to. I've been to Canada, I've been to Mexico, Baja, Mexico, I've uh, been to Honduras, um, they're kind of like still in uh, America, just not uh, southern, southern part of America. Yeah, so we don't have anybody from Mexico or Honduras on right now because that uh, is nighttime for them. So I'm going to say it doesn't count. No. <laughs> Dan, can we go push a little closer? Sure, sorry. Canada, I went for the Niagara Falls. I went on the Canada side, and I'm pretty happy about that. Oh, cool. That's before you had that passport to cross. Now you have to. Look down a little more for us. PBS just had a really good documentary about um, the Niagara What's ecosystem. That? Yeah, you can do another move. Too close there. Oh, no. oh. So, Chris, is there a country that you would like to have join that's not on there? I'd like to have join. Uh huh. If you could choose any country in the world to be Zoom calling in or Zooming in with us right now. Like Listening. a place I'd like to go or people I'd like to meet? Either way. Huh. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted oh. to go to Iceland. Oh, that would be a good one. It is just beginning to be daybreak for them. I would say it'd be nice if we had some people from Caribbean here, since we're they're the closest country to oh. where here. Oh. Christmas Island is. Uh, oh, 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 is oh, oh, oh! Hello, hello, friend. What are you? I think it's a cutthroat. Where is, is my that guess. coming from? What is that? All right, so. Um, Caribbean, it is. 
Maybe we can manifest Caribus coming and joining us. Oh, Indonesia loves Coralie. Oh my gosh, thank you, Indonesia. I actually do really <laughs> want to go to Indonesia. Um, there's a lot of graduate students actually at, um, there's a lot of graduate students at GSO that are from Indonesia. I love mie goreng. <laughs> yeah, mie goreng is delicious. My first full ROV expedition Deep, sir, deep water RV expedition was in Indonesia. We oh, were going awesome. in and out of uh, Betong in the in the in North Sulawesi. And where? Uh, North Sulawesi, the state. We were the ship was tying up in Betong, right in the Lombe Straits. Mm. It's actually really good because yep. I feel like there's kind of a lack of science in that region. Yeah, we were working with an Indonesian research vessel, the Brunanjaya 4, and they were doing um, pre-mapping for us. So they'd go out and map with their multi-beam, and we'd come in behind with an RRV and uh, do the ground truth thing behind their mapping work. Went to uh, discovered hydrothermal vents on a uh, submerged volcano called Kauriau Barat. So Lynette, a teacher in Norway, has a whole bunch of third graders coming into her classroom in about two hours and would like to know if we will still be diving. Uh, yep, we <laughs> will still be diving. Um, let's see. That would be 9.30 our time. Yep, uh, we're planning to come off the bottom at 11. Um, so if they join us in two hours they would have about an hour and a half left of our dive awesome thanks Lynette yep so South Australia is saying hello and they love our live streams thanks Australia and, yeah and the Maldives would like to know has anybody been to the Maldives here in the control van it's definitely on the wish list, but now. Yeah, I have yeah, it. I would I love would, to go. I would definitely love to go. Mm -hmm. Definitely would love to travel to all these places. They sound, everyone sounds so nice. Yeah, I love traveling. Not in like a Christopher Columbus way, and like a I'm curious and I like to try new foods <laughs> kind of way. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Ooh, that took a dark turn. I know. <laughs> Not sure why you needed to like specify that. <laughs> So as we get down out of towards the flats, Coralie, should we grab another rock somewhere if we see one? I say this just as we get in the pavement. But. <laughs> um, the only thing is that I'm worried none of this is useful to anyone, but let me see if Amber is setting is still on the chat. Because we, we snagged one right at the beginning of our watch at the top of this feature. Um. Several cuskiels swimming around this area. So if our tunicate fan is still there, maybe cross your fingers, just maybe. Could they be nodules? Could they be? Come down, please. It's hard. Uh, quick, zoom in there for me, Daryl. Go full zoom. Like a crab sponge. Or something. Hi, little friend. 
It uh, looks like a little basket, like they could play basketball down there, all the other yeah, little crabs. It's, it's impressively hollow. Yeah. So these crabs have specially um, evolved rear legs that it grabs hold of something and holds it over his head as camouflage. And it looks like it grabbed, stole a sponge somewhere and is now uh, climbed up into the squirrel. All right. You know, this, I'm really not, this might be, this looks like zoanthid instead. This could Wait. actually might be cool, Mana Mana. That squat lobster has a sponge? So it's not a squat lobster. It's, oh. a, <laughs> it's a decorator crab of some type. And I, I don't know if it's a true decor decorator crab or not, but hold on a second. I want to see if this is actually where it is. Sorry. So if this is what I think it might be, or something similar, this is a parasitic zoanthid that has completely stolen the skeleton of another coral. Wow. And it doesn't look quite right to me to be what I thought it was, but it might be. You want to get a closer look? Yes, there? please. All right. I think so. Can you, uh, you pulled me off there. Um, you can come down uh, 10 meters. I probably got a good enough look in, in what we've got to study it. I don't know if we, I don't think we have uh, to go back in. Come down 10 meters. Need a few more. Come down another ten. Turn off your uh, auto heading too, please. Okay, Daryl, you can uh, go tight there. a beautiful shot. Right. I'm thinking of that decorator crab, like Beyonce song. <laughs> he liked it so much he put a ring on it. <laughs> all right, that's that's all I need. I'm gonna have to get <laughs> some Roger, okay, shore base go consulting on that one. Um, but I think that's that could be the a Hawaiian gold cor gold coral or Kulamana kul mana, um, but I definitely um, need to consult with someone who's more familiar with that taxon than I am. To kick be sure. Auto heading in, and you're going to want to come uh, clockwise. Well, you can't yet, but you will in a minute. Would you put my gold coral um, Kulamana mana question mark as a thing? I want to come back to that. How you spell that? Cool <laughs> <laughs> I was singing the same thing. Got it. Uh, not yet. I'll, wait. I'll come down and underneath yet, but just when you do, you'll come clockwise. So there's been so much diverse geology over here, from the big boulders that yep. we're seeing now to the little pebble stuff, to the botry idols, to the ferromanganese big rocks. So interesting.
So our viewer that wants us to find a tunicate is still wanting us to manifest the tunicate. If only that's how it worked. <laughs> Wasn't that the point of the book, The Secret? Okay, I should oh. be able to come around now. The secret is you can manifest something. I think I would manifest a masseuse if I really had that power. Manifest a masseuse? Yeah. On the boat? Yes. I have a massage gun. Do you want to use it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I want a masseuse to be like, here, here's your hot stone massage. Like we get done with every watch and it's just like, there's the massage table. If you want, I could boil some fair manganese crust. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking of like right. Adam walking into the to the wet right. lab and being like, If you're what in a happy heck? place, can we look at this one right here? Absolutely. We're picking up a little diversity in primnoids here. Tilt down a little more if you can. Yeah. And you can come down uh, five meters. Come down another five for me. Uh, you want to zoom in there for a start? That's good, thanks. Oops. Yeah, this is a primnoid of some type. But again, I'm going to have to actually work on the work to get this one past primnoid. I like that little baby urchin in the background. Oh, and look, oh, a little, yeah, right little, there. little squat lobster hiding. It's almost like a little peekaboo. We see yeah. you. All right, I'm good. I got what I need. Come around and look at the, uh, just gonna, come on, ROV, I'll take you on. <laughs> <laughs> I get all defensive when you get too close. <laughs> It's a big one too. I feel like this is our biggest squat lobster of the of the shift. Must be eaten well. I think that's a. I don't think we've seen that that species yet. This dive, maybe this expedition. I can uh, go just a little tighter there. I'll see if I can hold it here. That looks so incredibly beautiful. Nope. Bouncing a bit on our tether here. <laughs> I do like him defensive posturing against the against the ROV. <laughs> okay, I can go away. Last time I was over at Howland and Baker, we saw um, two of them fighting over a fish. A yeah. fish had like gotten hooked up in the coral, <laughs> and they both had it, and one was on either side of the coral, and they were paying tug of war through the coral um, with the fish. When <laughs> the one that finally got it ate it like in seconds. I was oh. shocked at how, amazed at how quickly it put that fish away mm. once it wrestled control of it. <laughs> no good for that fish. Or that, not the fish. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that was actually really bad for the fish. <laughs>
Whoa, that might be the tallest Aritagorgia ever. Oh, wow. Do you oh. see it? Yeah, I see it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wait, why can't I wow. see it? It's too far away. Hold on. <gasps> Whoa, that thing's huge. Oh my lord. How tall do you estimate that the, the Aritagorgia uh, is? Well, right now the distance may be playing tricks on our eyes, so let's let her get a little closer. But right now it looks like it's like three meters tall to me. Hey, I get a good uh, view in uh, Argus. Atlanta. Or, yeah, sorry. Ooh. Atlanta. <laughs> nah, go tight there in Atlanta for a minute if you want. You'll have to tilt up for him. Wow. That's almost Hercules tall. Yeah, that, that coral is definitely pushing three meters. Oh, and it's got a little squat lobster up there, too. A little associate, little friend hanging out with him. A lot of streamers coming off of it, too. That's yeah. Oh, weird. yeah, those are all benthic tenophores. Oh, my gosh, really? Yeah, I can't I can't see the tenophores yet, but those streamers are usually feeding tentacles for benthic tenophores. So, wow. oh, yeah, see this dark this dark arm right there? That is all benthic tenophores. Holy moly. Just mold. lined up one after another with their feeding tentacles out. That entire arm has been taken over by little Tina Force. So men do us a bit for us there. Yeah, that's good there, man. Thanks. Oh yeah. That's beautiful. Man. Can you shift focus close a little bit and bring out the streamers, Daryl? All right, give me a second here. Oh, there they are. They look like little spider webs. He so was uh, he was saying shift the focus, not the zoom. And bring the zoom back to where the yeah. Whoa. yeah. Trying to pick up those strands. Wow. wow. There they are. Perfect. That's what I wanted. So how do, because the tenophores are just little comb jellies. How are they sitting there static and have all these little they, tentacles out? They're actually holding on to the coral. So they, they approach it, they land on it, and they, I'm not exactly sure how they do this because they're so simple, but they basically suck on to the coral and hold on to it and then leave there and then let their tentacles out um, to stream off in the current. And it looks like there's probably a good hundred or so across the entire coral. You can see the lasers playing through, um, refracting off the, yeah. the tentacles. Yeah. So can those tenophores move using their cilia like uh, the regular free-floating tenophores? Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know if they're, once they land, if they're landed for life or if they can pick up and relocate. Oh, that's such a gorgeous shot. If you're gonna land on a coral, seems like a pretty good coral plant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, agreed. Okay, go no white. And are those little fly trap anemones over on the other side too? I don't think they're fly traps, but they are anemones. Yeah. So this one coral is not round enough, right? No. No, I don't think so. Turn it. Roger, you can zoom out. Would this be considered Bautry Idol? Uh, I'm just trying to say that word at least once per <laughs> shift. And I was not sure if I'd already said it or not. Bautry Idol is more of like the surface texture. Um, it's kind of hard to see the surface texture of any of that. Do you mind poking one of those rocks right in front of you and seeing if it's loose? Sure.
I have to turn up my nip on. I had turned it off later. Pick up that manip. Grab that thing and poke her up, would you? <laughs> Careful, it's heavy. <laughs> Remember to hold your uh, jaw trigger closed while you hit the blue button. I suspect that is either going to be cemented, even if it's not cemented, probably isn't um, a good candidate. But it was so sitting there on the middle by itself. Yeah. There you go, huh? Oh, so the technique is to keep the jaws closed and just bash the rock a few times and see if it moves. <laughs> <coughs> so for those at home. Softly bash the rock. <laughs> Uh, ROV intern Rin is going to be softly bashing some rocks using the manipulator arm on Hercules for the very first time in the deep sea. Dealer's choice. Yeah, just some percussion. One of the uh, big ones. One of the loose ones. <laughs> that was a good one. You could ask the scientist to circle it for you. Just poke around, find one that's loose. I mean, I'm looking at I'm looking at the the biggest one out there, but. Copy that. I'll go for it. That's actually bigger than I thought it was. Doesn't look like it. Just push the ROV up a bit. Poke it harder. Copy. <laughs> Just bonk it once like a chicken <laughs> pecking a bug. There you go. Well, that one's not moving. Nope. I'll try All right. One. Thanks. Yeah, bump the other one real quick yeah. while you're there. Oh, the little one on the right. Closer. Okay. Doesn't look like it. Does not appear to be. Okay. <laughs> nice bonky. <laughs> so I use your uh, pilot cam to stow that, stow your weapon there. <laughs> you can slide it to the right out of the main camera view. Make this look so easy, Dan. Yeah, running a manipulator arm is super hard. They let me try once and then they were like, no more. <laughs> I'll just get back in the back row. Okay, Dan, and am I clear to go hydraulics blue off? Yeah, right. Let's look at the solitary hard door. We off. haven't seen one of those yet. It's not a big one. Nicely done, Rent. Way to go, Rent. Thank you. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> so this is a solitary hydroid. We've seen a couple little ones, I think, but this is the first, like, big one. Mm, it can come down... Uh, at least five meters there for me. Whoa. That looks like an alien. Well, to, to a terrestrial organism, it certainly is. <laughs> That's a big one. That's one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. Jeez. Ah, sorry. And what is that thing again? It's a solitary hydroid. Come down a little faster for me. Does look very alone out here. Okay, Daryl, you can uh, zoom there. Just a little bit for us. That's good, thanks. I feel like I'm mesmerized by its arms. Is that eggs? As it hypnotizes you and says, come closer. I know. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, like Little Shop of Horrors? It certainly Maybe has that vibe. Seymour. Oh, you're all right. So that little so flat out there. orange thing inside, that's also part of it? I am not sure. When we get, after we get a second of prettiness here, I'd like to zoom in closer because that looks a little weird to me. This is, I really think this is the biggest one I've ever you're seen. You're going to have to huge. go tail to tail there for us, mate. Oh, well then let's zoom in real quick dead center and then we can leave. 
right. So because this is a hydroid, it's part of the Nigerian family, correct? Yep. Go ahead, Daryl. What is that? Wow. Is that an anemone inside of a hydroid? Oh my gosh, look at that gorgeousness. It's, that's certainly different. What What are we looking at in the center there? Like it looks like sunflower seeds, except clearly not. <laughs> All right, we've got enough video. If you need to run, we can study this later. Um, doing all right for okay. the moment not getting pulled away i have never seen anything like that in my life yeah so looking at looking at my reference pictures it is i've all I, i've seen that mainly retracted but that is part of the the organism this oh. is a corimorphidae um but that is just never seen that the central tentacles extended that far before so those are tentacle uh, so all of those are just different variations of tentacles so we've got the outside tentacles the bright orange tentacles and then the little tentacles that look like sunflower seeds i don't know enough about the anatomy of this but yeah i, I believe all three of those are parts of the organism i really am mesmerized by this thing Reminds me of a how. Of a what? Of a how from 2001 A Space Odyssey. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Nifty but deadly. So because it's a hydrozoan, then it should have a whole bunch of nematocysts, so stinging cells. So maybe it is like how deadly. Can we come a little wide and get the whole organism again? Yeah, go on. nice and slow there. Yeah. Nicely done. Wow. I'm still so entranced by this. That's huge. Before we depart, can uh, you put the lasers at the base so we can get an actual good scale on it? Sure. You can uh, zoom in just a little bit there. Solitary hydroid. It's your worst nightmare, Adam. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're all different parts of the tentacles, or different tentacle types. The base is five centimeters across. That thing's huge. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the biggest one I've ever seen, by far. Okay, go ahead. I also kind of got a feel for it in Atlanta camera, too. Oh, that's a good one. Highlight. All right, what'd you say? So as we're doing a slow move away, uh, Queensland, Australia's tuning in. Canada is, oh, Canada's the tuna kit band. And Vancouver, British Columbia says that they are a huge fan and have six screens dedicated to various Nautilus Live, marine traffic, and Google Earth. Wow, that's awesome. No, it's just, it gets... Uh, we had a whole bunch of fans earlier from... That's... Where did I do it? Oil stuck in the... Norway, sediment in the bottom, and Maldives, South Australia. Uh huh. 
So, you. Ren, uh, while we're sitting here, can you explain yeah. uh, a little bit about the uh, amazingness that is a seven function force feedback manipulator? Seven function spatially correspondent force feedback manipulator. Thank you. Uh, ben? It's a cool manipulator. Well, how does it work? How do you control it? Well, there's this very cool controller here that sits in our lap, and it actually looks like a little scale mini manipulator. And when you move the scale manipulator, it moves the real manipulator in uh, a rough mimic motion. There's also a little halt button, so if you get yourself in an awkward position, you can halt the position of the real arm and then readjust the scale model in your lap and then unhalt it to continue. Can you uh, come up a few meters while you're yeah, chatting? Copy, copy that. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did y'all see the giant, or not the giant, Keep but the up. Hapilites? We'll just, uh, we'll hold it for shift change. Yeah, so. this this dude. Japatelia. You all right with Diapana. that, Lynette? We'll hold the ship for a shift change. We're pretty uh, close. It's a type of octopus. But we thought it was a, a, a piglet squid at first, and uh, then keep we had a couple up of viewers look down. who corrected us. It was super cool. It's been a great watch. A rock? Oh. We've, we've been debating this all watch. Some moments it looks really like carbonate under the crust, and other moments it looks very classically basalt shaped. And I, so we've been, we've really been struggling with that. Oh. <laughs> Video change. Oh. I think that's okay. <laughs> 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 Hello. <laughs> it's good to see you too. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd all the rain come from? <laughs> what about all right, an otter? We're going to do a watch change here so we're off comms for a few minutes. All right. <laughs> Easy llama. <laughs> Yes, please. That's uh, pilots off comp for watch change. So as we're going through our big watch change for the shift, huge shout out to Port Townsend, Washington and Port Alberni, Vancouver Island. Y'all guys have a great rest of your night.
hello to everyone online. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Our 8 to 12 watch, the best watch, is settling in right now. Uh, stay tuned. Okay, RV, are we feeling good to move? Thumbs up. <laughs> Science is uh, out, but we will get a ship move started. We know where we're headed to waypoint what two. Are we doing two, three, zero or something crazy? Yeah, right now we're doing uh, two, six, five actually. Right. And we're backing down a slope. We'll hit this. Uh, flat surface, flat bottom here, and then we'll start ascending back up. Bridge, Nev? Hi, Martina. Um, when you're ready, we'll do a move uh, three zero meters bearing 265, please.
quite a range between us here. I should close in. We're moving that way. Yeah, but we have a big range that way. You want to come in this way then? Yeah. Great. <laughs> As in you're driving this way. <laughs> I'm driving that way. Correct. So we're on the same page. <laughs> So you're, that page. <laughs> great. So you're making a comment, not a request. I'm just making a comment <laughs> on the current setup that doesn't appeal to my sense of <laughs> your sensibilities. Okay. Apparently they yeah they were backing down with Argus ahead of Atalanta or uh, uh, Atalanta ahead of Argus, but now we're reaching the. Flat stretch, so we'll flip around to her in front, right? I'll take that as affirmative. <laughs> uh, here we are again, H12. <laughs> it's a 12, it's a 12. Here we go. The watch with the many names. So what's happening? <laughs> All the way down. All the way down. <laughs> Are we on the move, Samantha? We sure are, science. Uh, <laughs> we are just getting uh, 30 meter step underway. Okay, we're gonna cross this little uh, plain, little valley here, and then head up that slope and hope to get to the top before or by 11 for a little great off the off the bottom. Do you want to do any uh, push cores in this valley? This, no. Okay. Do we want to stop for anything else, or this is a flyover zone? The only thing I could think of would, would be, you know, at one one spot along here, maybe do a little scoop of micronodules, mm. but not important, not like critical. So we can just keep making moves, and at the end of some move, if there's something interesting, we can stop. Okay. But I think we got a ways to go. What's the? Yeah, we we just started here along this uh, flat portion. And that actually not even there like, yet. like uh, 150 meters or something? Uh, let's see. Um, to waypoint three, we've got, yeah, 240 meters. Okay. Well, if everybody's ready, how about some introductions? We have some new viewers tuning in all the way from India. Whoa. Well. I'll introduce myself. Let's go. So my name's Adam. I am a professor at University of Rhode Island. I study submarine volcanoes. Uh, I'm the watch lead for the 8 to 12 watch. And are we going to add anything like any like opinion question at the end of this? Like our favorite? Maybe like favorite color or ice cream flavor. Ice anything? cream flavor. <laughs> Let's do ice cream. Favorite That's ice cream. Hmm. Fish food. Fish food. I fish like that. Food. Ben and Jerry's flavor. Mm, that's good. I feel like my mic is really loud. Am I? No, you're fine. Am no, I worried about sounds this? Okay. normal. No, you're <laughs> okay, why are you yelling at me? <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, everyone. I'm Jules. Uh, I work at the Museum of Comparative Zoology. Um, I'm a biologist. And, oh, what's my favorite ice cream flavor? Um, Cherry Garcia. Oh, that is also a good one. I feel that like that's a hot mine. take. That was mine. Oh, no. Oh. Paola. Oh, yeah. So, hi, everyone. My name is Paola. I am from uh, University of Puerto Rico, and I am this watch data logger, so I'm going to make sure everything goes on record and all around our exploration. And favorite ice cream flavor. I want to ask Jules, what is that? <laughs> the one that you mentioned. <laughs> oh, that one's good. That's cherry got, Garcia. Like, cherry and I chocolate so chunks. Good. Really? It's vanilla ice cream and it has, yeah, chocolate chunks and, and cherries. That sounds really good, actually. But yeah. Chocolate chip. Chocolate I think chip. That's Ooh. The next. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, a good solid chocolate chip. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, okay. It's a very basic one, but <laughs> no, it's like a comfort one. food. Well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Annie Halleck. I am the science communication fellow. This is my first time sailing with EV Nautilus. I am from 
a small island, small beautiful island of American Samoa. Um, I am a educator um, back home at our local high school, Samoana High School. Um, the mascot, actually, it's home of the mighty sharks. Go figure. Oh, uh, my favorite ice cream would be. I don't. This is this is a well. This is when I was a little kid. It's orange and chocolate chip. Ooh, Ooh. orange yes. ice cream flavor and chocolate chip. That's my yeah. That sounds really good. What's that weird thing uh, that looks like kind of a straight line there? Or is that just a little bit of rock exposed? Uh, you wanna go take a look? Sure. Let's just let's go poke deviate. a rock. Oh, we don't need to sit down. I just want to kind of look at it. Eye poke. An eye, <laughs> eye poke. <laughs> Much better than a poke in the eye. My friend does that. She works at uh, an eye doctor's <laughs> office. Uh, she has to poke people in the eye with air. It is. You know, and they blow air in your eye. Mm -hmm. This looks very cool. Looks hmm. like a, a bit of buckled crust. Hmm. Like maybe a little downslope buckled movement crust. caused the crust to buckle up here. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's like a very defined line. Is that a sponge? Yep. Sorry oh no, C pen. Uh, I don't know. Can we zoom in on um, this? Sorry to steal your thunder. Zoom in, Dave. What is that? Oh no, it's a sponge. I think it's a uh, Faraday. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks. That's good. When we're, re when we're ready, um, we will love to hear from our team on the Stop front row grinding. with their introductions. Let's just start grinding. Never mind. Never mind. Uh, sorry? Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, hi, Samantha Wishnick, uh, navigator, also the operations coordinator for Ocean Exploration Trust, which is the nonprofit that owns and operates Nautilus. Uh, ice cream flavor, I'd have to say I was inspired by the Ben and Jerry's reference earlier, not wow. a sponsor, um, but the <laughs> flavor that's chocolate chip cookie dough with brownie chunks. I don't remember the name of it, mm. but it's really mm -hmm. good. Yeah, and they have a frozen yogurt a version one. of it. Oh, Their wow. flavors get better, like the less ice cream that's yeah. <laughs> the more stuff that's <laughs> Robert. Um, Robert Waters, I'm the Herc pilot. I'm OET's uh, facilities manager and ROV engineer. And I guess uh, coffee, ice cream with whipped cream oh. and nuts. Oh, oh. Yeah. okay, we got we got toppings in there now. <laughs> I don't know that was on the table. Yeah. <laughs> uh, TJ Scanlon. I'm uh, the Atlanta pilot. Uh, ice cream with crema tostada. Um, toasted cream. Oh. Wow. wow. We got a fancy yeah. here. Yeah. Oh, boy. Wow, that and, uh, sounds good. Yeah, really nice. Sure does. Uh, Dave Robertson, lead video engineer on this expedition and uh, sitting in the video seat, zooming cameras and stuff. Uh, favorite ice cream was going to be <laughs> Cherry Garcia. It can still <laughs> be. We can both, Jules we can share favorite. <laughs> kidnapped it from me. <laughs> but, that is, uh, but I like those are fighting words. I like anything chocolate. So anything, just, wow. Just, you know, flavor chocolate, chocolate chip mint. Uh, or I'm, but I'm just going to go straight chocolate. Chocolate. Yep. Awesome. Solid. Thank you so much, team. Um, for everyone online, um, if you have any questions for our team, please send them in the chat, and I will relay your questions. You Ooh. can also let us know what your favorite ice cream yeah, is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm seeing, well, moose tracks. Oh, moose on. tracks. Moose tracks, Belgium chocolate chip, peanut butter cups, and fudge. Yeah, we already have our our viewers tuning in. Hey, Adam, so what's our primary objective for this dive? Yeah, so primary objective, well, so this dive started with some <gasps> engineering trials for the laser spectrometer, and those were successful. They were kind of 
trying to tune in at what range, how far away they could be and still get good information from their laser system. And since then, our objective has been to basically characterize the uh, biological organisms and the geology of, of this seamount, and that aligns with the objectives of this crew, of the whole expedition, which is to do that for this area, which is uh, particularly uh, important at this time because this area has been proposed as a, a national marine sanctuary. Right. And uh, there is a, mm -hmm. a national marine monument surrounding the, the island, the Palmyra Atoll and Kingman Reef, and uh, the proposed sanctuary would extend beyond those boundaries all the way out to the edge of the US EEZ. Mm -hmm. um, the, the comment period for that proposed sanctuary is open right now, so if folks uh, you know, want to write in and, and share their thoughts on making this area a marine sanctuary, we encourage you to do so. And it's on the Nautilus website, right. if you look under the, the cruise details. And you can also um, find more information on NOAA and NautilusLive.org. Um, Adam, are we heading towards waypoint two or three? Three. Three, okay. and then up to four. And Adam, do you see Thank anything you. here you're interested in scooping or continue uh, on? Uh, are we at the end of a move? I'm sorry? We're at the end of a move? Yeah, we're getting there. Nope. Keep going. Roger. Bridge nav. Can we zoom on this C pen, please? Can we add five zero meters to two six five, please? Thank yeah, you. Zoom in, Dave. What did we agree on? Parentopathies? Oh, no, this looks different, actually. Um, I don't think it's it's so path a day. Looks like it has different Oh, wait, I'm looking at black corals. On the side cool. and in the front. Yeah. Um, okay, that's good. I can remember that. I'm going to take over your screen for one second. Uh, okay. So how do these organisms feed? Like, how do they... I find that we find a lot of crinoids um, at this depth. Um, how do they um, adapt? Like... They are filter feeders, right. so they feed on. Um, you can you can sort of see on the screen. There's like these white bits floating by. That is marine snow, and that is like organic matter that falls through the the water column to the sea floor. Um, so these corals and crinoids and the ophiroids on the on the corals even they're positioned so that the flow is going through them and that food is coming with it. Um. You want to look oh, at these? we've got a shrimp. Shrimp. Anthoptilidae. Protoptilidae. Ooh. Dave, can we zoom in? Yeah, what do we yep, got here? Yep, uh, This could be a prim noid. Oh, actually, wait, What? what is this? Yeah. What node. are we looking at? Uh, uh, it could be Norella. Can you get any closer on the polyps? You need closer, closer? I don't think it's a bamboo. Um, uh, you want me to get closer to it? If you can, yeah. Or you zoom out, Dave? You want me to hold the ship? Uh, I don't think no, we'll we got we got some range here. Kay. Yeah, no, I don't need a ton of time. That is uh, Eritagorgia magnus spiralis in the background, though. Uh, I feel like Norella or Candidella? 
make most sense to me. Can you uh, give me some scope? Yep. It looks a little bit like thicker. It definitely has like primnoid coloring though. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with Norella. Can we zoom in, Dave? <laughs> I actually no. don't really need to zoom anymore. <laughs> a lot of Norella. You don't care about zooming? Oh, it's all sucked in anyway. Um, <laughs> I got too close. Yeah, you know what? Why not? If you, I'm I'm good on the ID now. Okay. Yeah. You want to see the other one? Um, no. All right. That's Moving all right. on. Thank you. So when you're trying to ID these species, like how do you how do you characterize them? Like how do you classify them? Um I mean you you get to know different coral at least genus and families. I don't know if I can say like down to species level mm -hmm. all the time, but uh you tend to see things over and over again in certain areas and you kind of become familiar with different things to the point where like if I on one dive, it was like, if I pass something yellow, I'm like, that's a plexorid because I'm not, I haven't seen any other like yellow corals that look like this, you know? Um, but it can be really tricky because sometimes it comes down to like the, the shape of the sclerites. So that's Zoom like the there. protein um, structure like around the polyp. Right. Um, sometimes you have to look at things Chris under a microscope. Anemone? Yeah, can we get in close on the anemone, please? Um, yeah, so when I look, when I ask to zoom in, I want to look at branching, I want to look at polyps, um, and like how the polyps are organized. Zoom in, Dave. Ooh, wow. So what are we looking at? Um, this is a Venus flytrap anemone, and it could be feeding on this chrysogorgid. Um, we can't see for sure, but we've seen a few of these already on these dives. Look at that um, little silvery thing. Yeah, what is that? Is it a shell? Um, kind of looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> <Come on. laughs> yep, all the way in. Okay. Um, hmm. Is it possible to get another angle on it? On the anemone? Yeah. Do we need it? Is the or there's more than one. Well, I just kind of want to see if there's oh, eating. Corollary happening. Can you zoom out, Dave. I'm glad you asked about how I identify these rocks. <laughs> <laughs> how do you identify Wait. rocks? Hold on, it's Chrysogorgia uh, geniculata. Okay, now say your thing. You want me to stop the ship, Robert? Are we good? Mm, I'm just uh, passing over the top of them, though. I don't know. I don't know how long they're going to be. Science, how long okay. do you want here? Quick um, zoom and go, or you want to stay longer? Quick zoom and quick go. Quick zoom and go. I just want to see if I can tell if, there's, the if it's feeding. Yeah, we yeah. just want to see if it's eating the coral. Yeah. Um, Paula, did you get that ID? Chrysogorgia geniculata? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, zoom in, Dave. Uh, it's hard to see for sure, but... It doesn't wow. seem like it's mouthy bits around the coral. Right. I wonder what it's doing there. Okay, all right, well, that's enough for me. Thank you. Time to zoom. All right, moving on. So how do you identify rocks, Adam? <laughs> well. <laughs> Good thing someone asked. Uh, there's big rocks. Yeah, small big, rocks. Big ones, small ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some in between. If you have them in your hand, you can lick them. Nope. <laughs> yeah. I mean, gotta, yes. You got to lick rocks. <laughs> um, but I think here what, you know, maybe what we look at in terms of distinction is whether they're volcanic rocks or sedimentary rocks because this 
flat top seamount was exposed at the sea surface at some point. So previously on this dive, they saw some kind of laminated sediments, maybe some kind of reef material, which I expect we'll see as we get to the top of this hill. So it's pretty cool. What are laminated sediments? Uh, looks like a stack of books, you know, okay. layer, Oh, layer. I noticed that right. earlier. Okay. What does that indicate? Is it just like... Well, uh, that indicates that it was laid down as a sedimentary rock. Okay. So they tend to kind of lie down flat because they get jiggled yeah. enough that the top gets flat. Um, whereas volcanic rocks kind of blurp up from, from the seafloor and uh, freeze in place in more kind of organic shapes. And you said you saw a reef structure. Does that mean that there was at some time a reef and then it was covered in other rock? Uh, there was a reef and it sunk below the photic zone. We got a little fish over there to the left oh. or something. Is that a tripod fish? Uh, so it, it sunk below the photic zone and then it's been sitting here for tens of millions of years getting this uh, iron manganese crust deposited on it. Oh, okay. So it had to do with like the sea level yeah, rising like, above it. Or it sinking or, below. Oh, Cause it these, can sink. This is now, yes, because as the, as the volcano dies, yeah. the crust cools and becomes denser and it kind of settles down uh. to a lower isostatic equilibrium, which basically isostatic. means, you know, you put a piece of styrofoam on water and it floats up high. You piece, put a piece of wood on water, it floats a bit lower. And so it gets denser and it sinks down into the mm. mantle, which can flow beneath it. Okay. And uh, yeah, because we're at, what depth now? 1,200 meters, right? Sea level was never uh, 1,200 meters below its no. current level. <laughs> And what did you say? Isostatic equilibrium? Isostatic it's equilibrium. It's a word of the day right there. Isostatic. Yeah, it means well, it's gravitational. let's look up the actual word of the day. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what does that what, mean, what was, the, what was the word today? What is isostatic? Isostatic means, uh, static means stable. Iso kind of means level. So it's mm -hmm. at its stable okay. level. So it's, gotcha. you know, gravity's pulling it down but into a material that's denser so it's mm -hmm. going to sink to a certain level based on the relative densities of the two materials that's okay. amazing wow cool stuff really cool for our friends online if you have any questions uh, please send them in all right the word of the day is bower bower oh that's like a oh that's a plant term yeah like a hedge of some sort Mm. Like a, not a, like a fort well, made out of branches. Oh, you know what? <laughs> a it garden refers shelter made with a tree garden boughs. shelter made with tree boughs or vines twisted together. Oh. That's interesting. Bower, neat. So, Adam, what's been the coolest rock you've been able to get your hands on, or like ever, <laughs> or like? Or like, oh, like ever. I like the I mean, freezing, ever, been able to get like your hands on. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, ever. <laughs> ever. Ever. Ooh, that's a tough one. So. What's that floaty thing? Oh. It's oh, oh, it's out of frame. Look at all my pokes. <laughs> so I think that, and those are not my pokes, Samantha, so don't count those against me. <laughs> Roger. Uh, Disregard pokes. There's not mine. Uh. <laughs> I think pulling some lava out of a lava flow with a hammer. Oh, that's wow. Really, really cool. Still glowing hot. Um, but one time with another ROV, I sampled a giant pumice. So the pumice was kind of, uh, so, you know, pumice is this very bubbly volcanic rock. Some people know it from like scrubbing the calluses off their feet or something. Um, <laughs> But it was it was probably like six feet across and and three feet high. So we took everything off the front porch of the ROV, took two manipulators and scooped <laughs> it up on there and held it and then wow. came up. 
That was pretty neat. Yeah, that's a, kind of amazing. Hey, Adam, um, speaking about memory lane, would you like to make any new memories here, scooping up <laughs> nodules? <laughs> We're at the end of a move. Sure are. It doesn't look rocky mm, enough. No, I don't think so. We still got, we're still halfway through this plane. Roger, continue on. But Bridge that was, nav. That was a brilliant segue. <laughs> I know. Thanks, do, Dave. Do we have to do <laughs> segues now? <laughs> Uh, bridge will do a five zero meters two six five, please. I just got a new mattress. <laughs> We're not selling mattresses. By the way. <laughs> I got to collect lava. Did yeah? you? It really? You did? With a rope. The, rope. How did that go? A Robert bot. Robert bot. That was Robert bot. <laughs> that was with the Jason ROV. <laughs> oh wow! I put it in a coffee can. It's right <laughs> as it was coming what? out of the ground. What? Wait, what? <laughs> with an ROV? Where? Yep. West We're on a, We need yeah. the details. Wait, why do you? Bring a coffee can down. Right. <laughs> <We're> lava. <laughs> we, we, the coffee can of science. Yeah. You were like, we're going to go collect lava, In grab the coffee, the coffee can. Grab the coffee can. Was it yeah. Folgers? Science. Yeah. Was it what? Was it Folgers? Uh, I believe it was, actually. <laughs> they were important Good questions. The last drop. <laughs> hey, we have specimens in... I don't know if I'm supposed to say that. that we have specimens in all sorts of jars. chunks of rock up into the water column. <laughs> was this West, what? West Mata? Yeah. So, yeah. despite the fact that 80% of the Earth's eruptions occur underwater, we've only seen, I would say, two of them live. Like, really? what? Oh, wow. That's, that's very crazy. And oh. where, where, where? West Mata was, oh, that's where it, was one okay. of them. And uh, North West Malta? M-A-L-T-A? Malta. No, no. Mata, down it's by Guam. Yeah. Ah, no. right, Urba. No? Oh. no, it's uh, no, wait, that's not even <laughs> Fiji. Fiji, ah. But uh, Northwest Rhoda is, is by Guam. Yeah. Ah. Maybe I've been to both of those. <laughs> <laughs> Northwest Rhoda is where the ROV sat down on what looked like solid ground, but it oh, was... Oh, yeah, the, the, the sulfur. A that pool I was of there. molten <laughs> sulfur. Wow. Bro, bro. Fell through the crust. Whoa. And it came back, and then, I don't know. I had to chip all the sulfur off. Uh, of it. Can you <laughs> zoom on this? I think it's an oh, echinoid. We're going to zoom? I'm pretty sure you, you a supervised someone else Brissaday? chipping <laughs> stuff off. <laughs> I don't know. It was pretty accurate the way he was doing that. They really, yeah, really that believed him. Yeah. <laughs> I think that we were is the all right chipping. wrist motion. You know, we should have like used some uh, torches or something to get that off of there. Torches. Like, it's like like a flashlight. It? What's it melt at? Like 105 C. We should or put something. on our wellies and use torches. <laughs> How do you handle lava when you collect it? Uh, uh, what, is, what do you do with it? What do you do with it? <laughs> then you make a Ooh. thin section and you look at the crystals and bubbles in is it. Is it a brissad? That's a, uh, whatchamacallit? Urchin. It's an Urchin, that's the word. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what. Not a rock. Not a rock. Yeah. <laughs> Pretending to be a rock. Living Maybe rock. you should lick it just to be sure. Oh, <laughs> it's danger. like the first one that came up. Wait, hold on. I have an ID. Once this loads. <laughs> that's pretty neat. It's pretty, pretty neat looking. Is it currently feeding? Uh, I don't know. Looks pretty stationary to me. Right. Do. Yeah, I think they're pretty much. <laughs> or is it moving? One hundred percent feeding. No, they they can gallop pretty fast. If like a sunflower star tries to get one of those, I mean not this this particular type, but urchins in general can move Ooh, pretty fast if they need to. It. I was that one right here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> not that one. This one. I'm just kidding. That looks good. <laughs> yeah. Right, it's it's Sparrowsoma. <laughs> Thank you. Sparrowsoma. Sparrowsoma. I and think it, it not looks only to me from this angle okay. like echino echinotherioida. Yeah. Sparrowsoma. That's, that's the order. Actually, it could be any of those, right? Yeah. These are all the same. Oh, okay. These mm. are all the same genus. So I'm just getting it to genus level. Could be any species. I, mean, I guess within if these that's genus. all you can do, then. <laughs> Jeez. All right, urchin king. <laughs> that's what we're gonna call Adam. I had, I had a little trouble <laughs> the urchin even king. thinking of the word urchin. <laughs> <laughs> urchin king, it is. Urchin king. <laughs> so we do have some questions from the chat. Thank uh, what does the wavy bottom indicate? Oh, that's Wait. a great question. Sorry. 
<laughs> uh, those are ripples, and they form when uh, they're a consequence of the sediment being moved by the current. And so the sediment kind of piles up on I'm still on the a good head here, Robert, yeah. up current side. I'm still on a good head. And it yeah. gets too tall yeah. and it falls down the down current side and it builds these these little ripples. And you can actually by measuring the height and the spacing between the ripples, you could say something about current speed. Whoa. Wow. That's super wow. neat. It's a Thank you for explaining. And we have one more. It's uh, so how far can the seamount sink depth wise with a continental crust? Ah, so well, these are part of the oceanic crust, but they're working their way over to the continental crust. And it's no oh, surprise. Adam, your mic, is, your mic low. is low. OK, what can I do about that? I'll Adam, just talk louder. Just stop talking. Okay. <laughs> just try again tomorrow. Um, there we go. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. it's loud. no surprise. Oh, loud and clear. Too loud? You're good. Okay. No surprise that the deepest part of the ocean is over in the Mariana Trench because that is also the oldest seafloor and it's getting subducted. And so, the ultimate resting place for this crust eventually is probably down at the core mantle boundary. So that's how deep wow. it'll eventually get. But by the time it it uh, kind of cools and becomes denser and sinks away f as it moves away from a mid-ocean ridge or a hot spot, about 6,000 meters is kind of where it's going to end up until it gets to a trench and gets down to maybe 8 to 11 kilometers. Very cool. Neat stuff. Uh, yeah. But you've exhausted all my knowledge, so <laughs> no more questions. <laughs> <laughs> Send in your questions. <laughs> Adam's going to sleep. Uh, pardon me, Dr. Urchin King. Uh, are you interested in any rocks in this? Order? I like it. Let's 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 do a well. Let's see. What's can I see? What our yeah, of course. bins look like? We have like a lot of space. So oh, okay. Yeah, let's do a, a scoop. Okay, we've we can, got. We can shake scoop. out the sediment and just collect the little manganese. Can we look at the right. floaty thing real quick yeah. before we do the rock thing? And Ooh. this ship moves any than 10 meters. What is that? So we got a little a little swing. Okay. If you want to move forward a little bit, 10 meters left of this move. I, Adam, I don't think sorry, we're going to see the floaty thing. The seal, we have a lot of space for the rocks. Oh, was that that was the wrong one? Okay, yeah. so all that goes open. Place here. Yeah, any place where we see all this kind of little pavement of, of rocks. Anyone know what kind of fish this is? That looked like a bathysaurus. It was... Or a halosaurus? Halosaurus, sorry. Long, thin, white. Had a very kind of blunt nose to it. Hmm. Yeah. What's special about these rocks? Um, so th these are bits of manganese crust that have been shed off the seamount. Mm, okay. And they collect here just like a placer deposit kind of um, and so it's interesting to know c kind of what the chemistry is how it reflects the chemistry of the crest this higher on the seamount or the front box cool oh the scoop yeah uh, are you gonna lick it gonna when it gets go. up here i wish it you had know, a handle on it depends how many we get probably not all of them <laughs> <laughs> are we taking a scoop yeah not a core not a core. Not a core. What was the fate of that be core much easier if this that, that we lost some sediment from? No. Uh, that one came up empty. Oh. But we got some good cores. Okay. Did someone draw teeth on the front of that thing? <laughs> <laughs> 
We used to have early. We have a Laser distinct tank. member of our team. <laughs> <laughs> nom, 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 nom. <laughs> we used to have really nice Someone milk did. jug with teeth, too. <laughs> the milk jug scoop. This one's a that real one. That is so cool. It's Imagine neat. if it was a coffee cup. <laughs> I had a professor who went to a recently active volcano and he poked some lava with a stick and he lost his eyebrows. <gasps> what? Yeah. Oh, it was a magic volcano. He said it was worth it. <laughs> and a dove flew out of his pocket. <laughs> really? I've definitely seen... I've d no, there was no dove, but I've definitely singed my eyebrows. <laughs> those, are, those are your professor okay. really lost. That one got me. Yeah, it blew oh, his eyebrows wow. off. Some, there was some sort of well, that, fire, that the stick, <laughs> which was wood. But it's cool when you go to the uh, lava flow, if you have like boots with uh, like a vibram sole on the bottom, you can stick your boot on the flow in the bottom of your boot burst into flame and then you take your boot away oh, and yeah, it he did goes that out. Too. Yeah. <laughs> That's really neat. Have you ever done that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to poke some lava. You know, for 30 years, Kilauea was active, but you can't go and poke lava anymore. There's <laughs> yeah, nothing floating there. Shrimp. So cute. All right, last scoop. Hey, maybe we're making our own uh, flavor of ice cream here. You know, oh, I was no. thinking oh the gosh. same thing. <laughs> this is, like what are you going to name it? Uh, we got to pitch this to Ben and Jerry's. Right. They're listening, by the way. So that's good? Hi, that's ben good. Where's this going? Um... They, you got two bigs on the starboard side and one big on the front. So, which one are you gonna pick? Uh, pick a big on the starboard side because okay. the front one we might need for a rapid More premium. So yeah, outlet there. That's sample tray, yeah. Yeah. You tell me when you want me to pump out. Okay. So in a big one? Yep. I, I mean, I think... Yeah, either I, E or F. I, I think the scoop probably won't fit in one of the smaller ones. Benthic brittle? Benthic brittle. Okay. Was that for the flavor? Yeah. Someone, mm. ju someone <laughs> just tuned in. Rock bottom flavor. Oh, Ooh, that wins. Ooh. Rock bottom. <laughs> yep. Clear this bump in. Yep. I think that's what we should label the, the sample jar that we put this in. <laughs> Paula, is this 047? Yep, 037. Zero three seven, even better. <laughs> That's a cool shot of Herc. So I do have a question about um Big Herc. Where was Big Herc built? It's probably a harder question than it sounds like. Because right. okay. it's been <laughs> built, it's yeah. been taken apart, it's been re put back together. Maybe the question is, where was it most recently built? Right. It was most recently at the University of Hawaii. Rebuilt, yeah. Oh, wow. At the University of Hawaii Marine Facility Center in uh, Honolulu, where we're normally ported. And for our pilots, um, Robert and Thomas, do you guys um, are part of, I imagine, um, are part of the process? Are you guys there from the beginning to actually launching? Well, essentially, are you guys there from the beginning? The build process? Yes. 
Yeah, I was there from bare frame till. Wow. Well, till now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 new to OET. Um, hmm. I was out here for uh, for two weeks during the during the yard period, and uh, was uh, working uh, with Robert and the rest of the team, uh, assisting with the, the final uh, final bits. Part of an elite team. Elite to hear team. to hear them tell it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a viewer um, asking, Herc's uh, grab arm looks different from last season. Did he get some upgrades? Does it still twitch? <laughs> Uh, we actually have the oldest craft manipulator still in operation. Wow. wow. <laughs> how, how old is that? I'm thinking like 15 years, maybe? Wow. We actually, the the head person at craft is a regular viewer, and he's probably watching right now. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> about, let's go. And he'll send us emails if he sees us. Doing stuff that yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's pretty cool. You want to go anywhere? Should we go somewhere? Let's move. Sure. Let's, Let's move. go somewhere <laughs> cool. Okay. Upward. I liked the look of those um, rock faces earlier. Great. Yeah, man. Well, that's where we're going. Let's let's do it. Bridge nav. Let's do a uh, five zero meters bearing two six five, please. So our next upgrade for Hercules is a new electronics bottle, which that's what? my project. I'm the electronics engineer. So I'm working on that new design. What is that? Can you explain? The oh. main electronics bottle? Yes, please. So that's uh, where all the, the power and the communication for the vehicle are. Um. So kind of like the circuit breaker for your house. Uh, it's it's a yeah I guess like a fancy distribution panel. Oh okay. It has power supplies and relays. And wow. And then all the communication channels to get get all the sensor data in and send it up the fiber optic link up to the surface. Will it be the same size bottle? Just We're going to keep the bottle and probably new end caps, but the same bottle. The bottle is very expensive to make because it's, it's a, a big full slug of titanium and then you wow. mill most of it away. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, yeah it's quite large, maybe four feet? It's, uh, it's Three? yeah, about four feet long and and uh, 13 inches or so around. A lot of titanium. Yeah. What's it depth rated to? What's that? What's it depth rated to? So that one's only rated to 4,000 meters. Mm. So maybe in the future we'll make a 6,000 meter model and then use the electronics over again. So you can see some feeding tracks there on the sediment. Feeding tracks? Some little Where? critter. The little path that's kind of wiggly okay. path through. Right, oh, I yeah. see it, yeah. I'm kind of wondering what cr critter can make that track. Probably a, a sea cucumber. Sea cucumber? Like Holothurian type of thing. Is he moving rocks out of the way? Yeah. Really? <laughs> I mean, it kind of looks like the rocks are moved, doesn't it? Urchins sometimes, you see urchins, they bring right. the rocks over them, do they? Oh, do they yeah, make tracks yeah. like that? Have yeah. you seen the urchins like in hats? I love the urchins in hats. <laughs> it's like the third time. 
I okay. There's new people here yeah. who might yeah. not have heard about and the not, urchins. Not only that, it's a wordy subject. But I think Samantha told me about the urchins with hats too. No, didn't you say no. something about? Oh no, it was. It was uh, <laughs> I mean, I probably no, it would. was probably it was me. Megan. No, it was Megan when she oh, worked okay. at some place that had urchins. They put hats on them. <laughs> well, our know, viewers I'm, maybe don't know. Yeah, no, they. We should tell them. Yeah. I'm agreeing with you. Okay. Oh, and then we have, well, this is a slightly different question. Um, uh, have you ever found any space launch debris on the sea floor? Ooh. That is a slightly different question. <laughs> that is a little different. Yeah. We've not found launch debris, but we have been on a mission to find uh, fragments of meteorite. Oh, wow. We did a um, couple of days search with uh, NASA's Cosmic Dust Curator, his Cosmic job title. Dust curator. Fantastic. Cosmic Dust Curator. Sounds Correct. Like the coolest job. Yeah. Um, and that was to find fragments of a meteorite that crashed off of the Pacific Northwest in 2018. Um, there was a there were pretty good uh, eyewitness reports of where it crashed down. Um, so we had a couple of locations that we went down. We brought along some. Were you on that cruise, Robert? Yeah. Okay. Didn't they get? I, I think was. They had weather radar that even picked. It and up. weather radar, yeah. So we had a pretty good idea of where where it went he down. Get, he did collect some. Didn't yeah. He? So we we collected a few um, potential specimens, and actually uh, there was another expedition out on the Falcor to that same site, and I don't think results have been formally published, but there are some promising options for markers. Wow. And Robert, what, was, what were some of the tools that were created to collect the fragments? Uh, we were using magnets that were affixed to a, like a uh, mesh kind of structure. Because uh, it was a iron meteorite. And you could pick up the, the pieces of it with a magnet. Yeah, I remember wow. particularly a like magnet panel was made with magnets all across it because we, we really didn't know what size meteorite fragments we'd be looking for right and so we made this like magnet panel and people wrote their names on the different magnets thinking that <laughs> if the meteorite landed on that magnet they'd win or something <laughs> but the, you know we we ended up like collecting like microscopic or yeah, you know like we sand like grain size big, big <laughs> meteorite, like, but uh yeah. did did you collect a lot of stuff aside from Oh yeah. Meteorite fragments. Oh yeah. Really? There was also like no visibility in the dive, Drop and so we were oh, just wow. kind of yeah. flying blind we're a little bit, and then making like those. dredging little holes to <laughs> search a little deeper. Yeah. yeah, it was it was very mucky, and we had a lot of folks tuning in who were really excited, as we were. But it was like you could only see a couple feet in front of you, and yeah. How, how long were you guys out there? I think we only did. Like a day or two of operations. It was it was part of another cruise. Um, we in the Olympic Coast National Marine Sanctuary, and then we diverted a couple of days for that for that dive. Wow! But it it was funny because the um, Mark Fries is the cosmic dust curator's name. Um, he you know also didn't know what to expect with a meteorite that had crashed in the ocean, and so he he brought a whole range of containers to potentially bring samples home in um, <laughs> you know like how big did they get <laughs> so he actually he, it was great he brought like a a huge like um stainless steel growler thinking that that could be like a good way to like a vacuum steel growler that would be a good way to carry like larger fragments home what? in um and then he he brought all these little ta like stainless steel tags to tag meteorite samples it was it, you know we all had a kind of a good laugh about it because we ended up getting just fragments, little particles of sand that could potentially <laughs> even be something. But um, yeah, new new experience for us and new experience for him trying to search for meteorite fragments underwater. Hasn't been done before. And you can see why. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, find the meteorite. Yeah. <laughs> So, science, we're about to, um, we're at the end of this plane here. We're going to start <laughs> heading uh, upslope. Anything you want to do while we're still here before I put in another ship move? Nope. Let's keep going. I'm all good. ROV? Good to go. Bridge, Nav?
Let's do a three zero meters bearing uh, two two eight zero, please. Thank you. Two eight zero. We're gonna start turning up. Rise up quicker. No. Nah. You've got about. Oh, look, you can see the edge of it in the uh -huh. Ar Atalanta oh, view. Yeah. That looks really cool. Yeah, it'll start to climb uh, after about 100 meters pretty steeply. There's rocks coming up. Yeah, got rocks. Thanks. Oh, we even got a waypoint on there. Hey. Oh, it's her gonna <laughs> hit it. If you cross <laughs> over the waypoint on Nav G, you get extra points. <laughs> <laughs> bloop, 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 bloop. Extra life it gained. Is pretty like a Pokemon engine. or something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Collect them all. Where are we in relation to the North Pacific right now? <laughs> we, we've, we've just moved away from it. <laughs> Ooh, that looks neat. He's going for it. I know. <laughs> Five, four, three, two. Do I just have to get in the square? Yep. <laughs> and don't run into the wall. <laughs> oh. A little starboard, a little starboard. You're drifting. Am I? Where's the waypoint? Starboard. It's right here. Oh, I was looking at the other thing. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> If you go by the, the cloud of fixes. Yeah. Yeah, the, the cloud of fixes. <laughs> Don't be distracted by the cloud of fixes. Head straight to the square of treasures. It's full of gold coins. Okay. All right. But that's a good point. We do need to reset the DVL. Let me yeah. stop again. The front row is having too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta Get keep up with the back row. <laughs> Can we do it right now? Even if we're not, he's, he's not stopped? Make the Whoops. Well, yeah, then he's definitely not making the target. Well, technically you're not making the target right now. Either. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to reset I've, this I've then. I decided not correction was, <laughs> was a better option. Than I saw this earlier on the dive. All those little divots in the yeah. rock there are kind of like coastal erosional features that you see oh. in the rocks. Yeah. How does that happen? How does that erosion happen? Coastal erosional features. Well, sometimes but we're not really near the coast, are we? But but it was the coast. But it was the way coast. in the past. Okay. 80, mm -hmm. mil 80 million years ago. Huh. So impressive. So, so evidence that it was grinding the their coast. grain in there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's <a> dinosaur <laughs> petroglyphs. Dinosaurs grinding their grain. <laughs> well, since we're looking at a rock, um, we have a viewer tuning in. Can you tell us the difference about weathering of rocks underwater and on land? Hmm. Yeah. So, on land, there's a lot of weathering on land and in in the ocean that's the same but on land you get a lot of mechanical erosion right. of rocks uh, and subsea you don't really get mechanical erosion but you do get kind of chemical alteration 
Um, cool. And you get, you actually, I guess you do get some mechanical erosion. We definitely see big landslide scars on the right. sides of these seamounts, um, but you don't get like rivers flowing and, and eroding into the rock that way. So when you hear like people say, oh, it's the Grand Canyon of the ocean, Oh, actually, we do have canyons as well. Yeah. So there's uh, mechanical erosion. It's pretty much the same. <laughs> it's the same. It took us a long time to get there, but there's a lot of but the same processes. Let's see you collect talent. Try, yeah. And then you can have Dave zoom in when you're on it. What do we see there, Jules? Hmm? You mentioned uh, an ID? Oh, yeah, you collect talent. You collect talent. I guess one of the things you don't see subsea is wave erosion. Yeah. Wave erosion. I don't really need a, a zoom nope. on this okay. one, guys. Yeah, I'd rather see more coral, if that's all right. More coral. Less yeah. sponge. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It'll mostly be like the ones that I need to get closer to identify that I'll really need to zoom on. Ten meter rings, are they? Bridge, no? Uh, five meters. Yeah, five. Five, okay. Well, let's do another uh, move. Three zero meters, two eight zero, please. It doesn't look like it's steep. There's as much shadow. It's just it's this kind of anemone. stuff. Anemone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anemone. Anemone. The yeah, three meter, five meter. Two eight that? zero, please. Uh, Coming up. Oh, okay. Uh, zoom request. Oh. This is a piece of rock, or is it rock? can you circle it? It could be. Oh, it's a coral. Oh, a coral. I think it's Norella. Arvi, are you able to zoom on this uh, coral? Do you need a circle again? Nope. There's another one there. Another one there. You can turn the head. That one down there is Chrysogorgia. That, that other looks one, like Norella. It could also be Norella. I but think this, this one's definitely Norella. Oh, and this is a uh, sponge. Uh, maybe Faraday. Oh, zoom in there a bit, Dave. Oh shoot! I said Faraday on one earlier, and yeah. I meant Rossella Day. <laughs> oh, that looks like Norella. And also a Plexorid right there. That's Norella. Okay. Um, okay, honestly, that's good. I can tell from here that it's Norella. And that's definitely Faraday. And that's Plexorid? And that's a Plexorid. Yeah. And that's an anemone. And that's a crinoid. And that's a crinoid. <laughs> and then on the other rock, Chrysogorgia and another Norella. Jules? Can you give me a hand real quick with the ID there? Yes. With that, the N A R E L L A. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, I can write it too. Is there a is there a Nutella? <laughs> that would be cool. Um, not yet. But let me know when you. Uh, <laughs> that was, that was what I first heard. Did There's you hear another Nutella? Nutella yeah. there. There's some like, more Nutella. No. They're really Stop cool. It. Another Norella. Silly Cameron. Or, oh, I thought you were talking to me. But the important thing like, hands the off the controls. The important thing is you did stop it. Yeah. So <laughs> um, can we look at this? Lower left. Oop. I don't know if I can Challenging see Challenging it all for first time finding uh, <laughs> Yeah, there we go. I'm guessing it's a crazy gorgia. Uh, it looks kind of hard whitish. to see here in this lighting. Chrysogorgia can be whitish. That's another Norella. 
Um, See it? It's over there. Yep. Uh, yeah. That looks like a, maybe a Ritigorgia. Oh, yeah. A Ritigorgia Magnus Spiralis. Oh, yeah. Maybe that is another Norella. There's so many around here. Adam was right. Wanna <laughs> zoom in there for me, Dave, please? <laughs> I'm just, I've been waiting my whole life to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm good here. Thank you. But let's get a pretty picture. You of want it. a pretty picture? Yeah. Okay. Let's go get the picture. Let's take a pretty picture. We have ten different pretty pictures. <laughs> Gosh, this watch has gotten very jaded. Look at this. We are the first people on Earth to ever see this coral. Huh. Very Is that true. something? <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. Are we good? Everybody's you look at it again? We're, good. We're good here. Thank okay. you. Yeah, there's Everybody's still thinking about ice cream, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's not so go ahead. Gotta go. Yeah. We have viewers asking, do you guys still have Sunday ice cream nights? Sure or do. Yeah, I didn't know that was a thing until this past Sunday. Sunday last time, was it? Yeah. Was it? Another Norella. Yeah. That's the only way we ice know. Day. Oh, so we don't have calendars oh, out here. We're going to get into some good stuff. We got a new flavor from oh, Salty Manganese Rocky Road. <laughs> Oh, I no. like that. That's from the viewer. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that again? Salty manganese rocky oh, road. Oh, yeah. Okay, so Do we have a look bunch at any of, of these? Uh, this one right here. <coughs> that That's big one to the right. Big yeah. fella. That could be that could be uh, uh, primnoid or bamboo. <coughs> ah. Zoom oh, in it's huge. Not quite Caligorgia. Ooh. Wow. Pretty. Is Has that bamboo? Two Venus trap anemones. Yeah. Two. Two. And there's a plexorid below it. It's looking pretty bamboo-y to me. I can't see really? any. Really? I don't see any segments. Yeah, I can't either. Yeah. Oh, good focus. Wow, that's problem. nice. Okay, good focus. And we're just finishing a ship move, so I'm thinking we thinking shouldn't have any more. I think this is after that. Yeah, I can see the... Do you see? There. Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah, okay. That's a bamboo. Can we get? Yep, good, thank you. All right, zoom out. And that was... We got a zip ahead here. Internodal. Hey Dave, I was wondering, what's the technology behind it, behind taking these amazing images? What goes into it? Golly. Um. <laughs> How long do you have? <laughs> <laughs> you come up um, faster. Yep. It started with daguerreotypes. <laughs> 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 it's um, an HD camera, uh, which uh, is a three-chip broadcast uh, quality HD camera uh, made by a company called Ikigami uh, with a 17 by zoom optical zoom lens uh, on the front of it. That's the main camera on Herc. Uh, okay. And I have full control over the iris, uh, zoom, and focus, and I do all three at the same time. Wow. Um, so we get HD uh, video, uh, digital video that comes up a fiber oh, awesome. uh, and uh, into the uh, control van and then gets distributed and recorded oh. on various recorders. Yeah. Oh, okay, I see you again. Cuskiel. And how long does it take to process like video data? It's instantaneous. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Were we interested in any of this stuff here? Um, are you still behind, or are you? Uh, uh, ship stop. So we got. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And there's nothing right in the. Oh, there's a Chrysogorgia. There's a Chrysogorgia. Um, 
I don't know. I feel like nothing is. Uh, everything is Not leaping on it. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is primnoid and chrysogorgiating right now. Now that's a, oh, that's a crinoid with a bunch yeah, of something's hanging <laughs> off of it. Okay, if we're not stopping, we'll keep moving. Cool. Yep. Bridge nav. There's a lot on the stock of that. Ooh, probably hydroids. Oh, look at that. Oh, uh, can we look at this, please? You zoom in, Dave. Let's do three zero meters bearing Someone two nine zero. Someone could write a paper about please. all these anemone associates. Someone did, oh, or wow. someone should. Someone could. Thanks. Someone should. Just tell Randy that's a, about this. That's a, that's a black huge coral. Can you? Yeah. Okay. If it's possible to get closer, I, I see that some of the polyps are gone. So I would say it's eating it. Yeah. That's a black coral. What kind do you think that is? Got me. So it's the coral and the flytrap, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the due to two different um, organisms, so what type of relationship do they have? Um, I think this anemone is eating the coral. Oh. Yeah. Um, so you'll see brittle stars, uh, ophiroids, on a lot of corals. And they either have a commensalist or symbiotic relationship in which either just the brittle star is benefiting or possibly both the brittle star and the coral are benefiting from the relationship. Look at all these little tiny uh, amphipods or something Ew. swimming around. Yeah, sea lice. Yeah, that. Sea lice. Sea lice. Oh yeah, I do, I do see them. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah, but this is um, coral livery. Coral livery. Coral livery. Like car carnivore? Coral livore? Is yeah, okay. coral livore. Like yeah. it's something that eats the corals. A coral predator. I don't know. Is it a black coral? I think so. It looks like it. It does have a really but I'm dark a geologist. skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks so much like Norella to me. Um. Are we, are we good here? We're good, yeah, thank you. Okay. So that ship move is starting and we're doing 290 now. I don't know, I really want to call that Norella. 